Hey everyone, welcome to another Goody Reader discussion video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to talk about the new Apple products that are going to be hitting the stores uh, fairly soon. Pre-orders are open now. Uh, within the first 24 hours, Apple sold 4 million iPhone 6s and the iPhone 6 Plus, which offers a fairly large uh, display yeah. for phones. So Peter, initially, what are your thoughts on the two new Apple phones? Well, the first thing I saw was just non-stop images and net memes about side-by-side -side comparisons. So I saw things like uh, the Z2 and the Nokia Lumia devices and even the Nexus 4 trumping the iPhone 6 in specs. And I understand that the uh, when we were having this discussion earlier, you were saying Apple is optimized. Their uh, OS to the specifications that they have. Right. But overall, when it comes to playing videos on a screen that has this much resolution versus this much resolution, then you get the Sony line of devices where they can record in 4K and do slow-mo and just all that stuff that Apple really doesn't bring. I, I find that it is a little bit limiting. Yeah, well, I mean, there's higher spec Android phones for sure. Absolutely. I mean, you could shoot in 4K and things like that, but I feel like Android is just too fragmented. I mean, sure, you could shoot in 4K, but is it really possible to stream 4K movies right. online? Or a lot of the games that were made for Android, they're not made with the intention of showing ultra high resolution. Yeah. You certainly don't get that retina display quality in terms of the average game on Android because you have to appeal to people with low-end, mid-end, and high-end devices. So you're not getting those exclusively high-end games like Infinity Blade, right. which really show off what Apple hardware can do. Uh, Apple has SDKs that they see to developers where the hardware and software are tremendously optimized, which you don't really find in Android. So I feel that perhaps the iPhone 6 Plus might be the better buy because mm -hmm. it has full 1080p resolution, but it's a bit of a bigger phone. Whether people could uh, hold that in one hand and easily scroll right. to be seen, I have big hands, I can do it, but right. a lot of people have smaller hands and being able to, you know, reach. go and reach is, yeah. might be a little bit Sometimes. too cumbersome. Yeah. All right, moving on, uh, Apple iWatch, or oh, they yes. call the Apple Watch. They have different tiers. It's not gonna be available until 2015, uh, but it does have a lot of things going for it. It's, you can make, you know, there, there's a lot of really high powered specs and right. it looks really sexy. You can get different wristbands. You can even buy a gold version for a few thousand dollars. Right. What are your impressions on the iWatch? I think it's kind of cool. Um, I mean, I was kind of waiting for Apple to release something along the sort because we saw that uh, when we went to CES, that smartwatches were the thing. Yeah. They had tons Wearable of boots. Tech. Yes, exactly. They had ones that looked like the Sony smartwatch that is just a block on your wrist. Then they had ones that looked like watches with analog dials that did Bluetooth streaming and cell phone capabilities. So I was definitely waiting for Apple to finally do something because whenever you think of technology in terms of cell phones, tablets, computers, laptops, you always think, well, what's Apple doing? Let's look at Apple because it's always the go-to for comparisons and referencing. And um, yeah, I just, I'm very excited to actually get one in my hand and you know maybe compare it against the Sony uh, smartwatch and against your Seiko and against the pebble that we have kicking around so um, yeah very excited the thing I find that's most limiting with the Apple watch as it stands is that you know sure it has Apple pay where you can pay for things using your watch and you can install apps and you know uh, all that type of stuff but it all comes down to battery life and these sort of things aren't made to go weeks without charging you I have remember this charge it every day yeah I remember the Sony I had um, every about two days I'd have to charge it unless it was just sitting on our table here and we weren't attending to it it would maybe last three or four but daily use it just being connected all day it, it would be 40 percent maybe 20 percent by the end of the day yeah so this is going to prompt obviously a massive third market with people making custom docking stations, yeah. making custom chargers and things like that. But it all comes down to it where 
you have to charge your phone every day. Yeah. And if you use it a lot, you're going to have to charge it, you know, once every 10 to 15 hours right. with, with constant use. So it's going to be the same thing with the iWatch, where traditionally a watch, you put it on and it just works until you have to eventually swap the battery right. out. Mechanical watches, uh, even, you know, that that's sort of how they are. That's the main selling point. Yep. But with smart watches, battery life is a huge issue it's a massive issue and a lot of people are saying right now that they're going to skip the first generation of apple watch and wait for mm, the second interesting okay so one of the things that make the new line of iphones and iWatches seem appealing is apple pay now apple pay much works much akin to the starbucks app or the mcdonald's app right. where you could um just scan a barcode uh, when you're paying for something and it's good to go. Square has really pioneered the whole mobile payment system, but Apple Pay, I think, really makes this more accessible. They've made uh, agreements with all the major credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. When you pay for things, instead of scanning your credit card number, it uses basically a disposable one-time sort of code that you you pay for something and the intention behind this is to limit credit card fraud oh uh, yes because we've all had our debit cards and our credit cards compromised and if you haven't had it directly you know someone who has mm -hmm. and being able to just like pay for something with your phone or scan something with your watch there's something really compelling behind that and with you know with paypal and things like that there's only certain vendors that actually accept that or with like the google wallet right there's only certain vendors that accept that with apple pay it's like if they have a scan gun like at your starbucks you can pay for something both costing a few dollars or maybe a few thousand dollars and feel fairly safe that you're not scanning your credit card you're basically scanning a one-use code and i think that that in itself is a huge thing and they're saying that mobile payments can grow from $1 billion in 2004, uh, 2013 mm -hmm. to $58 billion by 2017. Wow. So that's a huge jump. And I think if Apple gets into this quickly and makes it work, it's, they're going to that's the bar i must admit they're they're doing well with this particular feature here but they did not think of this this has been done before in other parts of the world like japan hong kong etc so this is not their idea per se that uh japan has actually had their phones uh been able to purchase things at checkouts and certain vendors and coffee shops just like that since 2005 2006 so yeah. you know just make sure that Every time someone says, "Oh, Apple has this new thing," it's like, "Well, they, they it's good that they're 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 refining it and making it work in North America, but you know, be sure that they're referencing or drawing ideas from other sources." Yeah, they've made a lot of you know unique relationships with big box vendors, right. but it's U.S. only. You know, like yeah, Whole Foods, exactly. it works in the U.S. but it doesn't work in Whole Foods Canada. And we have Whole Foods, so yeah. So Apple Pay may make a lot of sense to start in the U.S., but for the international scene, it's all a matter about who buys into it. Right. You know, what? What's, how can Apple sell like companies in Canada or uh, in the UK or in Europe to be able to do this? You walk into your bookstore, can you buy a book? Exactly. Do they accept Apple Pay? It's- Does it work everywhere basically? Exactly. Yeah. So it may be a while before people outside the US can really take advantage mm -hmm. of Apple mm -hmm. Pay. In the meantime, you can continue to take advantage of the dedicated apps. Like if you live in Canada, there's the Tim Hortons app, yeah, the yeah. Starbucks, Starbucks app, app, or the McDonald's app to be able to pay for things like that. Right. But it's not as secure as it should be. Yeah. What do you guys think about the new Apple products? I'm kind of thinking about getting the iPhone 6 Plus and upgrading from my iPhone 5, but I think I want to have actually play with it a bit to see if real life how does it work, how does it in, work in daily use right now one more thing before we wrap this up ipad air ipad mini with retina yeah they didn't really announce any new tablets this year i mean the tablets are great so they stand up to what is out right now and they certainly you know they can keep up with what's going on and they're definitely the a dominant force in the 9.7 excuse me 9.7 inch uh, tablet space and the bigger tablets like this kobo arc 10 hd so they didn't really have to but it was weird that they didn't yeah i mean i wasn't expecting them to release any tablets because 
all leaks for like the last six months were just phones. Right. You know? right. This is the new battery. This is the new, you know, home button. Yeah. This is the new, you know, this processor. This is the bigger phone. Exactly. Yeah. This is like the prototype shell where, you know, with tablets, you sort of had all those leaks months in advance yes. from like the, the component makers to the, the manufacturers. And you didn't hear anything about tablets, mm -hmm. which didn't surprise me very much that they never released anything this year. But the Air and the, the iPad mini with Retina, they do stand up yes. with whatever else is on the market so. so weigh in on in the comment section below are you gonna buy the Apple iWatch are you gonna get the iPhone 6 to the iPhone 6 plus how do you feel about Apple pay this is huge announcements and huge news and I'm really sure that you're gonna hear non-stop Apple news <laughs> for the rest of the year look, look at the contrast here what what two devices do you have in front of you hold it up for everybody <laughs> Apple iPad Air, Apple iPad 5. Android over here. Yeah. So, my name is Michael. My name is Peter. And this has been a Goodie Reader Roundtable discussion. Even though the table is square. <laughs>